So now that we've gone through the model itself, let's jump into the cam side of it. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, use Fusion 360 for the design. And then under this model tab, if you hit the drop down, you'll notice that there's cam, animation, render, patch. Well, the cam is uh, all your toolpath stuff. So in here, I've got all the components turned off, but the wheel, and um, I've got I've got a handful of setups over here. You'll notice if I collapse these, that um, I have a wheel setup, and basically to create a setup, you can come in here, create a new setup, tell it the Z direction, toolpath information, all that good stuff. Um, so if I look at this wheel, I can see that I have a couple of different toolpaths set up. So I have the, the contour for the spokes, I have a bore for the hole so that the dowel will fit in there, and then I have a pass on the outside to cut out the outer part of the wheel, and it also has a couple tabs on each quadrant um, just so that it stays, stays in place. Um, so if I look at this wheel, uh, I can come in and say let's, let's animate this, we can just say simulate it and I'll play that back and it'll play play everything in fact we can tell it to show stock and we'll speed that up a little bit so it doesn't take too long but you can see that it cuts out each of those pies and I didn't want it to didn't make sense to hog out all the material so I just had it cut the outer perimeter of each of those spokes and then just remove the material one thing I didn't do um, actually maybe I went back and did it but I I don't think initially I had tabs in here so you know when it cut the last round I just picked picked them out carefully um, but you can see that you know it went through create, cut the spokes uh, count board the the hole and now it's just going around that outer pass so pretty quickly you know you're able to set that up now if you were to edit the sketch itself and change the wheel size of this you would need to come in right click on the wheel and tell it to generate toolpath and then it would re-update all those tool paths. So if I parametrically said go from a five inch wheel to a six inch wheel, you'd see a red mark next to all of these and you just need to have it re regenerate those tool paths and then you could cut it out. Um, once uh, I've, I've added the G code for you guys to use, but one of the things you can also do once you have that is you can tell it to, um, let's see here, do a post process and then from the post process you can specify in this case I use the gerbil postscript I, I give it my wheel name hit post specify the location and save it out so that's really all there is to it to, to get the post out and then you can use um, you know whatever tool you're using to basically send this over to the the Shiboko or CarveX or the XCarve to, uh, to cut it out so anyway, hopefully that is helpful if you're uh, wanting to cut this out and, and use any of that. Um, so then to cut, you know, if you make changes to anything else, you'll notice that I've got like the side pockets and whatnot. Uh, I can tell it here, you know, I can just go down the list and turn all these things on. I know in this case I'm going to turn the wheel off and I'm going to turn like the left or the right side on. So I get that right side. And if I look at uh, my post here, you know, I extended the material a little bit so I had something to clamp onto. I probably could have clamped it on the, the side there. Um, and then I just whacked it off with a chop saw later. But you can see, oh, that was for the inner slot. Uh, if I look on the inside and pick that, you can see that I have, I'm, I cut out the inner slot there. And I made that a little bit longer than the, the bottom, just for the corners here so I didn't have to go in and clean out those corners so that the board would just fit in there okay uh, and then if I look at the side cutout must be on the other one um, let's see here oh, there we go so we can see we have the cutout there we have the bore for the wheels and then that back cutout um, now if I wanted to make changes to any of these, you'll notice the red uh, when I turn components on and off, it just wants you to re-update the toolpath so I can tell it to generate the toolpath. It updates those. If I wanted to modify this, uh, you know, this was shallow enough that I just did one cut to, to cut it all out. But if I want it to be multiple depths, you know, if it's harder material or, you know, I want to I wanna have it uh, go down a little bit at a time, then I could come in to my linking tab, tell it to do multiple depths, and you know I may do something like 0.02, which is really shallow, but uh, it'll show you the um, 
we'll let it regenerate and you'll notice now that you know you have a lot of different you have several steps in there to, to do that uh, normally I do we'll just double click on here and come back in uh, normally I do 0.04 for uh, for walnut pine things like that and it seems to work pretty well so in this you can see that we've got a couple of depths and uh, cut that all out so that is that is uh, the sides and we showed the oh, I think the other one that's kind of fun is the back text so let's turn off that we will go to the back part and you'll be able to see that I've got a couple of tool paths here I have one tool path that goes around the outer part that has multiple depths you can see where the bit goes in kind of roughing cleaning it out and then a couple tool paths on the inside of the O's um, so anyway that's uh, if so if you went in you could change the text to be something else re-update the tool path and it would uh, it would cut it out for you so hopefully that helps on the tool path how that's all set up and uh, certainly if you have questions on tool paths or anything post comments or, or ping me